How are we doing today? 93.7 The Ticket. Today is day two of the official interviews of interviewing Nebraska athletes here at the wonderful university. Here to my right, I have my roommate, one of my best friends slash content creator buddies and teammate, Ashriel Dixon. Ashriel, the Georgia native. He's a high jumper here. Me and Ashriel, you know, come from a little bit of the same background. You see, we were not very highly recruited out of high school. Uh, we had the willpower and the faith to just keep on pushing. And so a lot of athletes out there, I'm sure you can relate to this, but we were pushing out emails nonstop to different coaches. Yesterday, Ash came into my room and he just went down a full list of contacts of how many college coaches he was uh, in contact with during the whole entire recruitment process. And Ash, just like myself, was recruited late. I was recruited, I believe, in March of my senior year. When were you recruited? Dude, like, I committed to Nebraska like June, like June, <laughs> like June 16th. My senior year. June 16th of his senior year. That means he moved into the dorms in August. So that turnaround is actually insane. So, Ash, this is what I open up with every single interview question. But here we go. Why Nebraska? I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know. I don't I don't know why I chose Nebraska. I don't know why I chose Nebraska. But it, it feel like home. It feel like home. I got here as a freshman. I didn't know what I was going to expect. I didn't come on an official visit. I didn't do any tours or anything like that. But I just know as soon as I got on campus, everything felt right. I'm 14 hours away from home driving, and I haven't got no, I haven't got homesick. I haven't had the urge to like just want to go home. Obviously, I miss family, but I don't know. But the culture here in Nebraska is different. It's like no other. They say there's no place like Nebraska, and I just I live by that, you know. So I I truly I believe that man. And I mean, athletic wise, last year we won our conference championship. That's a that's a dream as a freshman, I'll say. And then we're just gonna continue to keep building this, as coach say, a full army. So and on the academic side, we're like one of the top schools in the nation for academic all Americans. So that plays a huge part in that as well. So exactly. that's why Nebraska. That's why Nebraska. And hey, Ash, I can relate to that thing you said earlier. Uh what is it you said that you said you never even visited this place before you committed? Yeah. I was in the same exact boat. So unlike you, I was a COVID kid. So mm. COVID hit me my junior year, hit you your sophomore year. So during that entire recruitment process, there was no official yeah. visits, no unofficial visits, no nothing. It was a virtual visit. I was walking on Nebraska's campus on a computer, pressing the space bar, taking me to different places. And that's how I gotta decide if I wanted to come to the university. So like you, man, everything worked out last minute and as you said before, you know, you got here and you instantly just felt like it was home. I felt the same exact way. Right when I got on campus, driving around the city, the the, the nightlife, the, the day life, when it comes to the academics, everything, it all worked out in the end. So let's go ahead and transition a little bit. Ash, go ahead and tell me what is your biggest, your own mental block or own block in your own way when it either comes to just college, when it comes to getting through your day-to-day. -day, is it the school that's most difficult for you? Is it uh, communicating with other people? Go ahead and tell the people kind of what's your biggest struggle right now from your day-to-day. -day. Well, Everybody knows me. I'm a social kid, and I love talking. So communication, nothing, everything like that, that's not a worry. But I'll just say getting in my own head. Like schoolwork, school has never really been my thing. And whenever I get stressed about something, I kind of like deter myself and like put my head down. But I just remember I have my, my teammates, my faculty, to always to be there to boost me up, and I just get through it, man. It's, that's really what it is, school. I mean, yeah. athletic-wise, God, he been stored the ability in me. I just got to put in the work and just be the vessel to be able to glorify him. But school, that's really a huge mental block. Especially this semester, they started me off with 18 credit hours, bro. Ooh. If you if you're in college, you know 18 credit <laughs> hours on top of being a student athlete is nuts. <laughs> so that was that hit me hard, and I was like staying up late, overthinking things, and just really couldn't get no sleep. But I talked to Mike Neiman and uh, the new counselors and everything like that. So we got that back down to 12. So yeah, we rolling right now. We, we rolling. rolling, baby. Hey, I appreciate you being transparent about the grades, man. Like you, I also, there was a, t a time period uh, last year outdoor, I was struggling so bad with my grades, man. It just hit me out of nowhere, the traveling, going from state to state, leaving on Wednesday, leaving on Thursday, having to cram, having to communicate with my professors. So, hey, man, I took my hat off to you because I was stressing out that off of, like, 14 credit hours. You're doing this off of 18. So, man, 18, and like he said, if you're a college kid, you know that 18 is just outland. It's just out of this world. So, Ash, go ahead and tell me or tell the people a little bit about your process and how you got to the university. So, I know you did say you were, you were a bit of a late bloomer, but mm -hmm. what separated you from other athletes? And for anybody out there watching, go ahead and tell them how did you become D1? Why you out of every single other you know high jumper out there? Why you? Why are you here at the university? Um, what makes you different? 
Really, I mean, honestly, God, I'll say, man. And the communication, my dad, he always, like, drove us to be able to be able to promote ourselves. And so, shout out, Tony. Shout you out, Pops. Dad, I love you. Mom, too, you know. My mom always <laughs> told me not to mama. make every make every opportunity count. But <laughs> I'll just say, you know, I was new to high jumping. I started high jumping my junior year of high school, and that's kind of late for a track very and field late, athlete. Very late. And I just, you know, I just went day by day with it, and then I just started texting coaches. I started off my PR six foot. I thought that was everything. <laughs> and if you know high jump at the or Division one level, going to Division one or college in general, that's that's nothing. So I just kept increasing, and then a short amount of time, I PR six ten, and then coaches found an interest, and then I'll have I'll start building a relationship with coaches. And they said that that's a really thing, a really good thing that they look in as a, for a kids coming to the next level to be able to communicate and actually show that they're motivated and driven to be able to be their best athlete or just the best person they can be. So I guess I'll say that really that would separate myself, quote unquote, from other kids. Not to take anything away from other kids, but a big a communication is a big part that plays in recruitment process. You feel me? So yes, I get that. No, I, I really speak highly of Ash here, man. I mean, Ash, he's the number one communicator I know. Rather, rather it's being a hype man, rather it's just going to talk to somebody. Man, this guy right here, man, he is an open book when it just comes to, like, if you got to get something off your chest, if you got to get some advice, this is the guy you want to go to right here. And I got to tip my hat off to this man right here because what are you, 5'10", 5'9", five, five, about my same height, right? About, bro, okay. <laughs> I think I'm 5'10", five, 5'11"-ish. Five, <laughs> Every time I go to the doctor, 5'9". And then I did a height thing in the weight room. Right. Five eight. What? And then this one woman, not the one woman, like the dog, she's out five seven. So I feel like I'm in the five seven to five eleven range. Whatever that means. <laughs> but, you know, different scenarios. When we're talking track, I'm gonna say like five eight, five nine. But if I'm just out talking to somebody, right. I'm five ten, five eleven. So talking to the females, you six foot? <laughs> right the females watching he is six feet tall but whenever he jumps six ten and high jump he's five seven if y'all want to know so let's just say me and him are near the same height right and this dude jumping six ten and for any of you out there who don't know nebraska is one of the most prestigious schools when it comes to high jump we are always within the top five throughout the entire year both on the men and women's size and that is that is all that credit goes to coach jonas shout out dusty uh, he was an Olympian here back in 2010 and 11, and uh, probably backed it up a little bit, but I believe 2008 as well. And so, you know, learning from him and even just talking to him as a guy, too, he's a really stand up guy and he sees potential. Like finding kids like Ash, man, like he really has an eye for this thing. He knows for him, he knows everything there is. So, Ash, to close out this interview, go ahead and uh, talk to the people about Coach uh, Jonas and just describe what it's like being under an Olympian. It's a, <laughs> it's a blessing. Every day I just remind him, my like, dog. You you jump seven nine seven eight and three quarters, which is unreal, and he just says, "Yeah, but I'm old now, so it's your turn." So I just really just look up to him as a role model, a uncle, a father figure, just somebody I can really look up to. And it's not always about track with him. We can actually have real conversations. We go to his house; he'll cook for us and everything like that. And like you said, like. Our high jump program, like, men and women, we're number one in the nation. I think I'm pretty sure we both finished number one last year in the nation. And we were sitting at number one the whole outdoor season. And it's really just a real motivational thing because when you do have somebody that's so high up on the spectrum, you're number two all-time NCAA as your coach, it really drives you to be able to want to be like him or surpass him, you feel me? Exactly. And he really puts together a really good group every year. So... Shout out to Dusty, man. You know, we love you. And, yeah, go Big Red, man. <laughs> go Big Red. Go Big Red, yeah. And, you know, for everybody out there watching, too, if you don't have the chance to go watch him, you can always follow him on Instagram as well. I think his name is Coach Jonas. Or go to the Husker Track and Field Instagram if you guys ever want to keep up with how our season's going. But, like I said before, I speak very highly of this character right here, man. Ash, great oh guy. God. For everybody out there watching, man, go ahead and follow Ash Real on YouTube as well. Me and him have been on the YouTube content creator journey as well. So, we're always going out in the streets on the weekends, <laughs> interviewing people, getting things done. So, Ash, go ahead and shout out YouTube, your exact username. Do you know what it is by, by, by chance? Um, I think my username is Astro135 or Astro KD or something like that. And then on Instagram, it's Astro KD. And then I also have a production page. Is A1 underscore productions. If anyone ever needs like a hype video or any type of video, hit me up, man. Exactly. Hit me up. Exactly. He's your guy right here. 
This was the um, second version of the Athlete interview, and this was 93.7 The Ticket. Adios.